two. Hello, I'm Jessica. That's J E S S I C A. Hi, my name's David. That's D A V I D. I'm Butri. That's B U T R I. Hello, I'm Megan. That's M E G A N. Hi, I'm Thomas. That's T H O M A. Yes. My name's Zakir. That's Z A K I R. Track three. A H J K B C.
name is Hassan. Hello, Hassan. Where are you from? I'm from Sudan. I'm Sudanese, but I live in Germany. Oh, really? Do you speak German? Yes, I do. But my first language is Arabic. Two. Banon, you are from Thailand, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm Thai. My hometown is Chiang Mai. Where are you from, Joanna? Me? I'm from Poland. I'm Polish. Three. Are you from Rome or Naples, Marco? I'm from Rome. What about you, Daniel? Where are you from? I'm from Bucharest in Romania. What language do you speak in Romania? We speak Romanian. Listen, ciao. That means hello. Oh, really? Ciao means hello in Italian, too. Track 9. 1. Where are you from? 2. What's your capital city? 3. What's your nationality? 4. What's your hometown? 5. What languages do you speak? Track 10. 1. Okay, everyone. It's time to start. Open your books at Unit 3, please. Excuse me, Rachel. Can you say that again, please? Yes, of course. Turn to Unit 3, Activity 1. 2. I'm sorry, Rachel. Yes, what is it, Tantip? How do you spell computer? C O M P U T E R. Three. Okay, that's all for today then. Put your handouts in your file for the next class. I'm sorry, I don't understand. What does handout mean? A handout is the piece of paper I give you. Track 11. Can you say that again, please? How do you spell computer? I don't understand. What does handout mean? Track 12. 1. It's 10 past 3. 2. The time is quarter to 8. 3. It's 25 past 2. 4. The time now is 20 to 6. 5. It's 5 to 5. Track 13. Hi, Khalid. Hello, Anna. Can I ask you some questions? Sure. Okay, first question. What time do you have breakfast? We eat breakfast at about 7 o'clock in the morning. So that's seven o'clock. And when is lunch? I have lunch at half past twelve. Five past twelve. No, no, I have lunch at half past twelve. Twelve thirty. Sorry, so you have lunch at half past twelve. Okay. And what time do you have dinner? I have dinner at quarter past six. So that's six fifteen. Thank you, Khaled. Track 14. What time do you have breakfast? When is lunch? Track 15. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. Wake up. And 
get out of bed. Wash your face. Now brush your teeth. Have a shower. Make breakfast. And drink your tea. Say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye. Close the door. Track 16. Excuse me, can I ask you some questions? What about? It's about your morning. Yes, okay. Why not? First of all, what's your name? I am Ala. Do you wake up early? Yes, I do. I wake up at 6.30. Do you have a shower in the morning? Yes, I do. I have a shower in the morning. Who makes breakfast? Do you make breakfast? Yes, I do. I make breakfast. Do you get the children ready? Yes, I do. I brush their teeth and wash their faces. And then I dress them. Do you go to college? Yes. In the morning, I study English. Do you do your homework in the morning? No, I don't. I do my homework in the evening. Track 17. 1. Do you wake up early? 2. Do you have a shower in the morning? Three. Do you make breakfast? Four. Do you get the children ready? Five. Do you go to college? Six. Do you do your homework in the morning? Track 18. Do you make breakfast? Yes, I do. Do you do your homework in the morning? No, I don't. Track 19. Yulia wakes up at 7 o'clock. She makes breakfast and takes the children to school. She makes the beds, washes up, and tidies up. At 10 o'clock, Yulia walks to the town centre, does the shopping, and carries the bags home. She meets her friend for lunch. In the afternoon, she cleans and does the washing. Then she cooks dinner. In the evening, Yulia plays with her children and talks to her husband. And then she watches TV. Track 20. 22P. 40P. 65P. 93P. 50P. 45p, 37p, 32p, £1.10, £1.50, 
route 30. Track 21. Hello, love. What can I get you today? Let me think. I want two kilos of potatoes. Two kilos of potatoes. Here you are. And a kilo of tomatoes. Uh, okay. And one and a half kilos of onions. Here you are. Thanks. How much is that? Two pounds sixteen altogether, please. Gemma, come in. Thanks, Julia. Let me show you around. The living room is here on the left. What a nice room! The kitchen is next to the living room. Upstairs, there are two bedrooms and a bathroom. What a lovely house! It's a really nice place. Thank you. Mia. What do you mean? 
For example, the guitar, the piano, the violin. Oh, yes, I can play the guitar. What can you play, Eva? I can play the guitar too. Would you like to play together? Yes, sure. Track 28. I can play the guitar. I can dance very well. I can't swim. I can't dance. Track 29. One. I'd like a ticket to the city centre, please. Where are you going? Oxford Street. Is that a single or return? Return, please. Well, that's four pounds, please. Thanks. Two. Are you going to Battersea Park Road? Yes. OK, let's get on. Two tickets to South Thames College, please. Are those singles, returns, or have you got travel cards? Singles, please. Four pounds, please. There you are. Three. Hi, we're going to Hyde Park. And then we'd like to go to the city centre. Do you have travel cards? Yes, we do. Here they are. OK. Can you tell us when to get off? Sure. Just sit over there. Track 30. I'd like a ticket to the city centre, please. Two tickets to South Thames College, please. Hi, we're going to Hyde Park. Can you tell us when to get off? Track 31. One. Excuse me, can you tell me the way to the bus station? Okay, we are here at the school. Yes. Go down the high street. Okay. Go across Market Street and Park Road. Yes. Turn right at the bus stop and go down Railway Street. Okay. The bus station is on your right on Railway Street. Ah, thank you. Two. Excuse me, how can I get to the supermarket? From the car park, turn left and go down Park Road. Okay. When you get to the traffic lights, turn right. Yes. Then go straight on. I see. Go across the road at the zebra crossing, and the supermarket is opposite the school. Thank you very much. Track 32. Can you tell me the way to the bus station? How can I get to the supermarket? Track 33. Okay, let's play What's My Job. I'll start. You ask me 10 questions and try to guess my job. I can only answer with yes or no. Okay, so do you work inside? Yes, I do. I work inside a lot of the time. Okay, do you work with your hands? Yes and no. I think I work with my hands a lot, but I sometimes work at a desk. Do you work with people? Yes, I do. I work with people, but I also use machines. Oh, this is difficult. Do you work in a small place? No, I don't. I work in a big place. Do you like your job? Yes, I do. I like it a lot. Do you get a lot of money for your work? No, not really. Do you work in a factory? No, I don't. I don't work in a factory. Do you work in a hospital? Yes, I do. I work in a hospital.
Are you a doctor? No, sorry. I'm not a doctor. I win. Oh, okay, my turn now. Let me think. Right, I'm ready. Okay. Do you work with your hands? Yes, I do. Do you work with people or with machines? That's two questions. Okay. Do you work with people? Yes, I work with a group of people. Do you work with machines? Yes, I work with machines too. Do you work inside? No, I work outside. So you work outside with your hands, with a group of people and with machines? That's correct. Do you build houses? Yes. Then I think you're a builder. You're right. Track 34. Do you work in a hospital? Yes, I do. Do you work in a factory? No, I don't. Do you get a lot of money? No, not really. Do you like your job? Yes, I do. Do you work with your hands? Yes and no. Track 35. One. Hi, Yolanta. Hello, Nongluk. Come in. Thanks. Can I get you anything? Would you like a drink? I'd love a glass of water. And for you, Yolanta? Could I have a cup of tea? Yes, of course. How do you like it? White, with two sugars, please. Would you like something to eat? Can I get you a biscuit? No, thanks. How about you, Nongluk? What can I get you? I like a biscuit, please. I love sweet things.
three. Track 39. Oh, look outside. Why? What's the weather like? It's raining and I don't have an umbrella. Don't worry. You can have my umbrella. I'm wearing my raincoat today. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Track 41. Look outside. What's the weather like? very kind. Track 42. I've got a cold. I've got a stomachache. I've got backache. I've got a cough. I feel sick. My throat is sore. Forty-three. One. Good morning. How can I help you? Have you got any free appointments today? Who is your doctor? My doctor's name is Who. Doctor Who. Okay. There's an appointment for three o'clock. Is that okay? Do you have any for this morning? I've got a really bad stomachache. There's an appointment with Dr. Livingston at 11.30. Okay, 11.30 with Dr. Livingston. Two. Hello, come in and sit down. I'm Dr. Livingston. Hello. How can I help you? What's the matter? I've got a stomachache and my throat is sore. I see. Are you taking anything for this? No, doctor. Let me have a look at your throat. Uh-huh. Is it bad? No, not really. Take this prescription to the chemist. Come back to see me next week. Thank you very much. Track 44. One. Can I have a first-class stamp, please? Yes, here you are. I is that everything? Have you got an envelope? Uh, no, we don't sell envelopes. Two. Hello, uh, what can I do for you? Can you put five pounds on my gas card, please? Could you put your card in the machine, please? Okay. There you go, madam. Five pounds gas. Scales, please. Okay. And is
Is that international or national? It's London. So, that's uh, £2.46 first class. Track 45. Can I have a first class stamp, please? Have you got an envelope? Put five pounds on my gas card, please. Track forty six. One. Pardon me. Is this the end of the queue? Yes, it is. Two. Excuse me. Would you like to sit here? Oh, thank you very much. Not at all. I'm getting off soon. Three. Excuse me, it is seat three. I'm sorry, someone's sitting there. Okay, thanks anyway. Excuse me, it is seat three. Yes, it is. Please take it. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Four. After you? No, no. After you? No, no. You first. No, please. You first. Track 47. Pardon me. Excuse me. After you. Is this the end of the queue? Is this seat free? Thanks anyway. You're welcome. Not at all. Track two. Hello, Gower Surgery, can I help you? Uh, yes, I've got an appointment to see the nurse on Wednesday, but I can't come then. Could I change it? Yes, of course. What's your name? Samina Khan. Okay. She's usually here on Wednesdays and Fridays, but she's away this Friday. Um, the next appointment is Wednesday morning next week. Will that suit you? I can't make it then. I've got lessons now on Wednesday mornings. Uh, could it be next Thursday or Friday? She never sees patients on Thursdays. So, would next Friday be okay? She's busy till 10am, but she could do 10.30. Would that be okay? Yes, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, see you then. Track three. Can I ask you something? Yes, Malik. What is it? Would it be okay for me to miss class next week? I've got a problem because I've got a doctor's appointment next Wednesday. Well, the class is very important because you have an exam soon. Can you make the doctor's appointment at another time? I'm really sorry. I couldn't because they were so busy. Okay. I'm worried because I'll miss a lot of work. Could you give me some from the lesson, please? Yes, I can give you some photocopied sheets to do at home. You'll miss the listening practice, so maybe you could go to the computer room and do the listening exercise by yourself. Okay. You've missed a lot of classes, Malik. You must try to come more often. Yes, I'm sorry. I've had a lot of problems with my work this term. Well, remember, you can ask the office for advice if you need some help with something. Yes, thank you. Track 4 Hello, can I help? Yes, I'd like to get extra TV channels for free. 
You can do that with the free view box. Is that what you wanted? Yes, I think so. Well, we've got several. They start from about £20, but there are no extra costs after that. It depends what you're looking for. What are the choices? You can have one that connects just to your TV or to your TV and DVD player. Oh, I see. Also, if you pay more, you can get different features such as subtitles or one that has built-in program timers or games and so on. Oh, it's quite complicated, isn't it? Yes. Personally, I would recommend one that can do several things, but they do cost about £40. OK. And is it easy to set up? Yes. They come with clear instructions. Also, you can call us if you need any advice. OK, thanks. Can you show me some of them, please? OK. Track 5. This is Hancourt Dental Surgery. The surgery is now closed. Our opening hours are 9.30am to 6pm Monday to Friday and 10am to 1pm on Saturdays. We are closed all day on Sundays. If you have an emergency, please telephone 0873 587 953 for the dentist on call. The emergency dentist can see you at the general hospital. There may be a charge for this service. Alternatively, you can call the practice nurse from 9am Monday to Saturday and she may be able to help over the phone. If you need to cancel an appointment, Please leave a message after the tone, giving your name and the date and time of your appointment. To rebook your appointment, please call during opening hours. Thank you. Track 6. Hancourt Dental Surgery, can I help you? My name's Hai Chang. I think my filling fell out yesterday. Can I see the dentist? She's completely booked up today, I'm afraid. It's very painful. Could she just have a look? Well, if you can come in at the end of the day, she might be able to see you for five minutes. Thanks very much. Will I have to pay? It depends. Are you on benefits or under 18? I'm on benefits. Well, treatment is probably free then. Can you come at 6 p.m.? Yes, thank you. See you then. Track 7. Conversation 1. Hi, I thought I'd just come and say hello. I'm Alex, your neighbour at number 6. You moved in yesterday, didn't you? Oh, hi. I'm Monica. Yes, I'm not really sorted out yet. Well, they're lovely flats. I'm sure you'll be happy here. Where did you live before? Over the other side of town. But my flat was too expensive. This one's cheaper. And my old flat wasn't very nice. And it was further from town. Yes, it's much quieter here. And all the neighbours are really nice and friendly. Good. Also, this flat is newer than my old one. So the decoration's better. And it just looks cleaner. I love it. Well, give me a knock if you need anything. Track 8. Conversation 2. around the corner. Do 
you know Bristol Road? It was awful. I was only there for six months, but I hated it. It was much noisier than here, and the flats didn't look as nice. These flats are smaller, but they're much nicer. Oh, I know where you are. Yeah, I lived there for a bit. I wasn't very happy. Uh, you're right, there's less space here, but it's better. Anyway, hope to see you around. Yes, bye. Track 9 Hello, come in everybody. Okay, I just want to show you around the library and learning centre today, so you know where everything is. We use this a lot, and it can really help your studies, so we do encourage you to use the facilities as much as possible. Okay, now something very important is all the books that can help you. On the back wall, there are all the grammar books and dictionaries, so you can use those to help you with your homework. Also, I know sometimes it's hard to study at home, so next to the window are all the desks where you can work quietly. You mustn't talk here, and you're not allowed to bring food or drink in when you're studying. Then you can see we have several computers for you to use near reception here. Now, don't be worried if you're not sure how to use them. We can help you. It's very easy, and it means you can use all the CDs we have to help you with learning. You have to sign in to use them. There are lots of exercises you can do to help your English, and sometimes we ask you to find information on the internet as well. We run special training courses to show you how it all works, so do sign up for one if you need some help. Now, just by the door, we have English magazines for you to read. Please don't take them out of the library, but they are useful as they have lots of articles you may be interested in and it's important you read as much as you can in English. Now, do you just want to have a look around and come and ask me any questions if you need to know anything? Track 10 Can I help you? Yes, I've lost my bus pass and one of the drivers told me to come to this office to report it. Okay. When was this? Yesterday. The bus was going to the bay, but I got off at Cardiff Central. Did anybody find it? I don't know. Sometimes passengers give them to the driver, but sometimes other people steal them. Can you fill in this form so we can report your pass lost? Oh, okay. Can I get a new one? You can get a replacement pass, but you'll have to fill in a new application form. Can I get that here? Yes, but we need to see some form of identification. Did you pay for your pass, or was it free? It was a free pass. Well then, you must also give us some proof that you are allowed a free bus pass. Okay, I'll go and get that and come again tomorrow. We're open from 9.30am and we close at 3pm. How can I get back home now? Where do you live? Canton. I'll give you a return ticket to Canton to use today and tomorrow, okay? Okay, thanks. And I'll cancel your old pass in case anybody tries to use it. Uh, can I have your name? Yes, it's Sally Park. Track 11. Though we can say morning or afternoon. 
Which would you prefer? Morning, please. Is that it, then? Yes, but you must be in. If you're not in, we leave a card and take it away. So you would have to call us and arrange another day. OK. Thanks. Track 12. Hello and uh, welcome to the school. I, I thought it would be best if I show you around the school and show you the facilities we have and where the children learn and then I can speak to you individually. Okay, now we're here at the reception desk, which is where you come if you have any questions or want to see anyone. If you look just past the corridor, you can see the big hall. We use this as a gym and we have concerts here at the end of term. We can fit all our parents and children in there. Then over by the glass doors is a library. We use this in lessons and the children can go there in between lessons as well. We try to buy new books every term, but it depends how much money we have. Then next to the reception desk here is my office and you can make an appointment to see me at any time. I'm often here after school if you're working, so just call the secretary to arrange something. And finally, over there in the corner by the water machine is the computer room. We try to use this at least once a day with the children. Now, if you follow me. Track 13. Good morning. Can I help you? I think so. Can I pay my bill here for the electricity? Yes, you can. Have you got the bill with you? Yes, here it is. Okay. Now, how would you like to pay? You can pay cash or check. Or you may be able to pay with your bank card, if it's one of the ones we accept. I've got this bank card. I'm sorry, we don't accept those. You'll have to pay by check. All we do is stamp the bill to show when you paid. Do you want to do that? Okay. Who do I pay the check to? The electricity company? No. Make it payable to post office counters, please. I see. Can I pay all my bills here? Well, you can usually pay for your gas and electricity and telephone. With your other bills, it would be best to check. They usually have something on the back of the bill telling you how to pay. Okay, thanks. Can I have three stamps for Morocco, please? Have you got the letters? No, they're at home. I'm sorry, you have to bring them in. You see, if the letter is going to another country, we must weigh it before we can tell you the price. Oh, okay. Thanks. Track 14. Conversation 1. Hello, WRC Heating. Hello, I live in the Park Grove Flats. You're responsible for our heating, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, is there a problem? Yes. My heating doesn't work. I don't understand why, because we've got hot water. Uh, when did it go wrong? <laughs> Two days ago. There was a click, and then the central heating went off. I tried to switch it on and off, but I can't get it to work. Can you come and look at it now? Well, really, you should contact the Housing Association and they ask us to come out. There was nobody in the office when I called. The thing is, I'm really cold. I've got small children and it's winter, so can you come straight away? Okay, I'll sort it out with the office. We can get somebody over to you later this afternoon. Uh, uh, what number is it? Oh, thanks. 63. Track 15. Conversation 2. Hello, Andy's Plumbers. Oh, hello. I hope you can help me. I live at 33 Taft Terrace and our bathroom is flooded. Can you come out now? Yeah, hang on a minute. I need some details. Why has your bathroom flooded? Did you leave the taps on? No, something seems to be broken at the back of the bath and there's water everywhere. You need to come now. 
is going down into the flat below us. I can't stop it. Well, I'll try to get one of the plumbers on his mobile. He might be in your area, but it'll be at least ten minutes, I'm afraid. You need to try and turn the mains water supply off. Where's that? It's usually in the kitchen under the sink. It's a big tap. Just turn it off tightly and the water will stop. Okay, thanks. Got to go now. Wait, I need your phone number. Track 16. Hello, HR department. Oh, hi. I'm calling about a job that was advertised in the paper. Is it still available? The one for an assistant in our call centre? Yes. My name's Rihanna Pawani, and I wanted to apply for it. What do I do? Well, can I just ask you a couple of quick questions? Have you got any IT qualifications? Yes, I've got a CLATE certificate. And are you comfortable using the telephone in your work? Yes, I worked in a call centre last year. Excellent, you've got some experience then. And why are you interested in working for us? Well, I really like talking to people and using the phone. And a friend told me you're quite a good company to work for. Good, that's what we need. I'll send you an application form in the post, or you can do it online if you prefer. Yes, I'll use the computer at college and do that. It's so much easier. Can you get that to us by the end of the week? Because we're interviewing next week. Are you available for interview next week? Not on Wednesday, but I can do any other day. Okay, well, if you get the form to us, then we'll be in touch. Thanks. Bye. Track 17. How are you? Fine. And you? Oh, I'm fed up. My flat's too small, and it's really making me feel unhappy. What do you mean? Well, my sister's living with me now because she got a job here, and she's studying at the college. My flat's only got one bedroom and a small sitting room and kitchen. And then there's all my sister's stuff. She's got loads. And she smokes. She says she's giving up, but she never does. Why don't you speak to the Housing Association and find out if you can change your flat? I don't think they'll let me move. They've got a waiting list. They'd never let me change. And they won't help because I don't have any children. You don't know. It may depend on whether they have something available. I'm sure the Housing Association will listen to your reasons because you have to study and work at the same time, and that's important. It's very difficult to get on with your studies if you haven't got any space. Oh, uh, okay. Do you think it's a good idea for me to call them up? Oh, yeah. Or you could drop in and see them. They may take it more seriously then. But also, think about what you can do to make your life easier. Like, agree with your sister to study at different times, or maybe move the furniture around to give you more space. Yeah, you're right. The good things about my flat are that it's in a really nice part of town and also I've got really friendly neighbours, so I'm not sure I want to change. I feel much better now. Thanks for your help. <laughs> That's OK. Oh, let me know how you get on. Track 18. Conversation 1. Citizens Advice Bureau, can I help? Yes, I'm phoning because my landlord has written to me and he wants to charge me more rent. But I'm only working part-time, so I can't afford it and I don't know what to do. Well, if you can come in and bring your rental agreement with you, we can have a look at it together. But don't worry, it may be that he's not really allowed to do this or we may be able to sort something out. Can you come in tomorrow? Yes, in the afternoon. Okay. Well, if you can come in at three o'clock, someone will see you then and be able to give you some advice. What's your name? It's Robin. Track 19. 
Conversation two. Citizens Advice Bureau, can I help? I'm not sure. I'm very worried because I've had a gas bill and I'm sure it's wrong. You mean it's too much? Yes. We only use gas for the hot water. I don't understand why it's so much. Did the gas company come and read your meter? No. Uh, I don't think so. Well, what you should do is call the gas company. The number will be on your bill. Ask them to come and read your meter when you're at home. Then they can check if they have got the bill right. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, thank you. Call us again or come and see us if you still think there's a problem after they have read the meter. Okay, thanks. Track 20. Hello? Hello, this is Crystal Catering. My name's Matt Lewis. You applied for a job with us. I've got your application and I wondered if you could come for an interview. Oh, hello. Um, yes, that would be great. Okay, now I'm doing the interviews next week on Thursday. Is that okay for you? Thursday. Don't worry. We'll see if we can fit you in another time. What about Friday or Monday? Friday's fine. What time? Can we say 2 p.m.? Is that okay? Oh, actually, can we say 2.30? I've got another appointment then. Yes, great. Now, do you know where we are? Behind Tesco? No, that's the head office. I'm in the Millennium Building on Park Place. If you walk up Queen Street, it's on your left, and we're about halfway along there on the right, if you're walking away from town. Okay, thanks. See you next Friday then. Bye. Goodbye. Track 21. 1. If you have any inquiries about your bill, you can get information online. 2. I'm thinking of upgrading my phone because mine is very old now. Three. I was paying £20 a month for 300 free calls, but I'm going to change my price plan so I can get 400 free calls. Four. My contract finishes in September and I want to use a different phone company then. Five. I dropped my mobile phone on the floor, and now it's broken. Six. Please hold, if you wish to speak to an operator. Track 22. Call 1. Welcome to Z Phones. For billing inquiries, press 1. For mobile phones, press 2. If you are phoning about anything else, press 3. Call 2. If you need to talk to someone about your bill, press 1. If you wish to make a payment, press 2. If you are phoning about anything else, press 0. Call 3. If your mobile phone has been lost or stolen, press 1. For upgrades, press 2. To speak to an operator, press 5. Call 4. If you are thinking of leaving said phones, press 1. If you wish to change your price plan, press 2. For all other queries, please hold. Call 5. Our calls are recorded for training purposes. If you do not wish your details to be passed on to other companies, press 0 now. If you would like more information about our services, please hold and your call will be answered shortly. Track 2 Well, um, actually I don't know much about the UK or Britain, except that there are about 60 million people living here. But they're not the same, are they? I mean, Britain's made up of England, Scotland and Wales, but... 
The United Kingdom is England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Well, I didn't know that, and I come from Northern Ireland. <laughs> I know, and well, I just don't think any of us probably know much about where we're from. For example, do you know which is the highest mountain in the UK? Yeah, I know that one because I live there. It's Ben Nevis, and it's huge. 1,300 metres high, and it's really beautiful around there. And uh, did you know that it's about 600 miles from the north of Scotland to the south coast of England? Oh, no, I didn't <laughs> know. Hey, what's the population of Scotland? It's tiny, actually. Only about 5 million. And Wales has only got a population of about 3 million. south of Ireland, it's Dublin. And uh, Cardiff is the capital of Wales, and it's got a fabulous castle, the new Welsh Assembly, and a rugby pitch slap bang in the middle of the city. <laughs> well, we've got a fabulous castle too. Edinburgh Castle, and a fantastic cathedral, and a new parliament. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, okay, you two. But England's got Dover Castle, Warwick Castle, Canterbury Cathedral, and St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Shall I go on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough, you lot. Una, what do you know about London? Well, lots, because I lived there for about six years. It's the biggest city in the UK, and over seven million people live there. It's divided north and south by the River Thames, and you can walk along it from uh, the Tower of London um, right down to the Houses of Parliament and then past 10 Downing Street uh, where the Prime Minister lives. What I like about London is that you can hear every language under the sun there. Did you know that there are more than 300 languages spoken in London alone? Then there's the royal family and its history and the Tower of London where Henry VIII imprisoned and beheaded two of his wives. Horrible thoughts. <laughs> and you've got everything from the Notting Hill Carnival and the London Marathon to, you know, um, uh, the, the university race, uh, the Oxford and Cambridge boat race on the Thames. So why are we living in Birmingham? Because it's the second biggest city in the UK. And it's my home. <laughs> <laughs> Track three. One. In my opinion. In my opinion. Two. From my point of view. From my point of view. Three, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, four, I personally think, I personally think, five, well, it depends. Councillor for Brimington South in Chesterfield in 
1987 and stood for a total of 12 years. Then I was elected as MP for Chesterfield in 2001 and 2005. What's the most interesting part of your job? It's all very interesting, really, but probably it's the people I meet, especially at my surgery, and trying to help them with their problems, trying to, uh, trying to effect changes in their lives, if I can. And how often do you go to the Houses of Parliament? I'm there four days a week when Parliament's in session and when I'm actively involved in debates um, on the privatisation of council housing, the closure of post offices and pensions, for example. Can you tell me how often you run your surgery? Well, most Fridays we run a surgery and anyone can book into it. So how can people contact you? Well, they can drop by at my office or they can ring and book an appointment to see me when I'm not at Westminster. But it's actually best to email or write first explaining the problem. Can you describe your typical day? Okay, well, I'm up at about 7.30 and I read my mail as soon as I can. When I'm in Chesterfield, I'm at the office by about 8.30 and, of course, local issues there take up most of my time. Uh, when I'm in Parliament, I often have a working lunch on a committee and I always do a lot of work in the evenings there and don't ever get to bed much before 12. What do you see as the most important issues of our time? Oh, there's so many. Uh, all the ones I've just mentioned, uh, housing, education, health care, but also human rights and international development are very important. And, of course, environmental issues. Well, thank you so much, Paul, for letting me interview you. I just have one more question. What would you like to be remembered for? Ah, OK, that's interesting. Uh, I think what I'd like people to think of me is as a person who liked to do his very best for the community he lived in and uh, who changed the law to allow councils to build cheaper housing again, yes. Paul Holmes, MP for Chesterfield, thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny. Track five. First of all, Lamai, can you tell me a bit about your background, your village and family? Mm, yes, I was born in the north of Thailand, in Laos actually, in a village and I have two brothers and two younger sisters. What about your parents? My dad's from the south. I think he met my mom doing building work in the north. And you know, they sort of fell in love and got married, you know. Um, she was a Buddhist and he was a Muslim. He was a farmer and he used to have his own land and house. That was before their problems. What about your education? Can you tell me your memories of school at that time? Yes, it was good. The teachers were nice, but we had to do a lot of writing, you know. And Thai writing is very difficult. Um, and in Thailand, you have to carry lots of books with you to go to school. You had to buy them. You had to buy the books. Did you have the money to buy them? Well, every parent had to find the money. And they weren't expensive then. And you say you left school at? About nine, I think. I was at school about four years. Yes, I was nine and a half or nearly ten. Did the teachers mind you leaving? Did you have to go back? Mm, no, they actually didn't come looking for me then because the law was not that strict at that time, you know. Now, if you don't go to school, you go to court or whatever. It's like in England now. Time changed. Um, have changed. Everything's changed. Where did you go then? My granny used to take care of me. But really, I wanted to be with my parents. We were very poor. Um, so my mother and father had to work in the city, in Bangkok. So I had to move there. I used to look after my brothers and sisters and to cook for my family, you know, because my mother had to work too. I was about 13 then. What happened to you next? I got a job in a kind of a clothing factory. I worked the machines. I was about 15, but I didn't like it. And then I went back to visit my granny and decided to stay in my village. 
That's all. And then? I met my husband. He's a milkman from England. I met him there a few years later. We used to write every month for over a year, and then we got married. And well, you know, we are still poor. Track six. I keep telling him. I think you should relax and be calm, and just try to take life a bit slower. All the time, rush, rush, rush. He's still a young man, and God willing, he's got a lot of time ahead of him. He should just get a good job when he leaves school, eh? Go to college, get a good training, um, a plumber or an electrician or something like that, you know, like I did. And I think in the future he should find a nice wife and marry and settle down. And in this way, he can be happy too, like me. I mean, we all want it to be David Beckham or a rock star or something. But again, he has to realise that these are just our dreams, and that real life is very different. It's not like this. Real life isn't that easy. You just can't say that I'm different from him, you know. I feel like he never listens to me, and he never has. He just goes on and on about how content he is and all that, like he thinks he knows how I should live my life and what will make me happy. But he doesn't ever listen to what I want for myself. I feel very upset with him, but I keep it all inside. Really, I don't think he's ever going to change. Anyway, I've made up my mind now. Now, when I leave school this year, I'm going away. I'm going up to Manchester. Yeah, I reckon I can get a job and do my music at the same time. That's all I want to do, really. No way am I going to get married and have kids like him. No way. Well, not for years anyway. Track seven, part A. Hannah, I've got a problem. What is it? What's the matter? Well, the thing is, my neighbors are very noisy, and I can't get to sleep at night. Oh dear, that's bad. Yeah. What should I do? Why don't you talk to them? They may not know there's a problem. Track eight, part B. One. What's the matter? What's the matter? Two. What's the problem? What's the problem? Three. Well, the thing is. Well, the thing is. Four. What's your advice? What's your advice? Five. What should I do? What should I do? Six. Why don't you ring the doctor? Why don't you ring the doctor? Seven. I think you should call the council. I think you should call the council. Eight. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Nine. Thanks for your help. Thanks for your help. Ten. That's okay. That's okay. Track nine. Hello, Mustafa. Thank you for talking to me today. First of all, can I ask you a little about yourself? Hello, Valerie. Yes. Well, I'm a refugee. I've been here in the UK for about 
eight months now. Um, and in my country, I was a lawyer. But I had to leave, to flee from there, and go to a neighboring country. And there I was in a camp. But my whole family got international refugee status. Um, and after seven years, we got here, under a refugee resettlement program. Your English is very good. Thank you, but not so good, I think. <laughs> you do some volunteering work now you're in the UK, don't you? Yes, that's right. Where do you do this? Well, I work in three places, actually. Um, at my community centre, at the local British Red Cross Centre, and sometimes um, at the Adult Skills and Education Department as an interpreter. That's quite a lot. How often do you do this? Well, I do one full day on Monday or Tuesday with the Red Cross, and I do a Saturday every two weeks with the community centre. And the interpreting? Just when they ask me, maybe once a month or so, something like that. And what exactly do you do? All sorts of things, really. I help with the admin in the office at the front desk, talking to people, answering calls or inquiries, um, keeping the place tidy, that sort of thing, you know. Anything really to help. So, why do you do this? Why do you volunteer? Well, I chose to do this because... for two things, really. Um, to give my time to a worthy cause, and to get to know about the society, how it works, and the social habits of people, you know. Um, and to do voluntary work is to express yourself, you know. That you can give something that doesn't cost you anything, without expecting anything in return. It's part of my beliefs. Are there any other benefits? Yes, you can make so many new friends, and it helps you to integrate into this society. Will you carry on being a volunteer? If I can, yes, absolutely. Well, Mustafa, thank you so much for letting me talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. It's been a pleasure. Track 10. Good morning, Mr. Pryor. Good morning, Mr. Pryor. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Nassim. How are you? Well, thank you. Fine, thanks. Uh, and you? Very well. Uh, how can I help? Well, we'd uh, like to talk to you about the rent. Yes, uh, okay. I see you fell behind with the rent last month. Oh, and the month before, actually. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry about that, uh, but I changed my job. Uh, but it's okay now. That's good, because I was getting concerned about this. But uh, there are a couple of other things I'd like to talk to you about. Okay. Well, uh, the thing is, in our kitchen, the sink is still leaking and... Uh... Track 11. Good evening, everybody. It's nice to be with you tonight. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about Nazruddin, the honest smuggler. Now, Nazruddin has very big honest eyes and when you look into his eyes you believe that he could only tell you the truth very big eyes and a round honest face now he's going to the border between his country and the next and he's got a donkey with him and the donkey is carrying lots of bales of straw very neat and high a lot of straw on his back at the border there's an inspector there a very wise, a very clever border inspector. He's been doing the job for years and years. Now, nothing ever gets past this border inspector because he's very clever and he's got very, very narrow eyes. Eyes that look right into your very soul. One day, he sees Nazruddin approaching on his donkey. Clip, clop, the donkey goes. And clip, Clop, he goes right up to the border inspector. And the border inspector narrows his eyes and looks straight into Nazruddin's big brown eyes and says, Who are you? And what are you doing? And Nazruddin replies, I am Nazruddin, the honest smuggler. 
The inspector looked into his eyes and thought, yes, he does look honest, but there's something not right here. What is it? There's something going on. So, he went through the straw that the donkey was carrying on its back, bale by bale, straw by straw, looking at everything, but he found nothing, not a thing. He widened his eyes a little and said to Nazruddin, You may go. There's nothing here. The next day, who should arrive at the border again but Nazruddin? The border inspector again looked through all the straw, looked through everything and found nothing. Absolutely nothing. So he said to Nazruddin, You may go. There's nothing here but straw. Well, this went on for days and days, and the days turned into weeks, and weeks and weeks went by, and still, Nasruddin and the donkey came, clip, crop, up to the border inspector. And he could see that Nasruddin was getting richer and richer over the months and years, but still, he found nothing. Finally, the border inspector grew old, and he retired from his job. Now one day, long into his retirement, the border inspector went to a crowded market, stopped to have a coffee, and was drinking his coffee, when suddenly, in the distance, he saw Nazruddin, and it was like there was no one else in the world around him. He narrowed his eyes, as he had done when he was a border inspector. He left his coffee and the coffee shop and just walked straight up to Nazruddin. And Nazruddin's eyes were as big and honest as ever. And he said to him, Nazruddin, honest smuggler, I ask you, I beg you, you must tell me after all these years, please tell me, what have you been smuggling? And for the first time in his life, the border inspector's eyes widened as he heard Nazruddin say, Well, sir, it was donkeys I was smuggling. I was just smuggling donkeys. Track 12 A final question to our panel. If you can get married, at 16, why can't you vote at 16? Annette? Oh, uh, I think in the UK you can vote at the age of 18, yes? But to get married at 16, well, actually, there are many people like me who think this is too young and maybe it should be put up to 18. And there are good reasons to be confused, too, because the law does seem a little strange, I think. For example, you can join the army and become a soldier at 16 or 17, I think. But you can't actually drink alcohol in a pub until you're 18, can you? But, uh, can you be sent to war at 16? Actually, no, no. You can't be sent to war, uh, but you know also, you can be sent to prison at 18. And uh, I do think we need to look at these things seriously. Thank you. Jan? Well, yes, of course. The rules are a bit strange. You can't drink alcohol in a pub until you're 18. But you can drink at home as a child. And you can get a full-time job at 16, I believe. My question is, why is there a difference? Thank you. But... Uh, we have to have a difference because we are not mature when we're young. For example, you know, young people can get a little uh, part-time job for a few hours a week at 14. And I think this is good. This is very good for them. But uh, you can't buy cigarettes in the shop until you are 18. And this is correct. This is very good too. Emma? Well, I think it's an interesting debate. My son has just passed his driving test and he's only 17. And he's allowed to drive and that makes me a little nervous. But probably we are all happy that at the moment we can retire 
or draw our pension at 65. And uh, well, to return to the question, what we should at least think about is lowering the voting age to maybe 16, because young people need to be involved as soon as possible in decisions that, you know, can shape their future. Track 13, part one, the first 5,000 years. I have a historian with me today to give us a summary of English history. Can I ask, first of all, when did people first come to the British Isles? Well, we think the first arrivals came from Europe in about 4,000 BC. And about 1,000 years later, Stonehenge was built, around 3,000 BC, although nobody is sure of the date. Then we can move forward quickly to the invasion of the Romans under Julius Caesar in about 55 BC. They built a long wall called Hadrian's Wall between Scotland and England and introduced tax on the English side for the first time. I'm sure that wasn't popular. When did Christianity arrive in England? Well, by 410 AD, Roman rule was coming to an end in England and the Romans finally left. Back home in Rome, many Romans had converted to Christianity. And to this day, the center of the Roman Catholic Church is in Italy, in Rome. In 597 AD, Christianity was brought to England by Augustine. He started a church and a school to train priests in Canterbury, which eventually became Canterbury Cathedral, still the head church of the Church of England today. The school is still there. It's called the King's School. What happened next? Well, there were many new invasions, and these groups started to settle too. The Angles and the Saxons invaded after the Romans had left in 420 AD. Viking invaders came from 793 AD and started to settle in the north by around 850. Different rulers tried to unite the different kingdoms of England. Finally, these kingdoms were united under King Canute in 1016 AD. What about 1066? Ah, yes, the Battle of Hastings, one of the most famous dates in English history. Well, the Normans, or French, invaded at Hastings on the south coast, and King Harold rushed down from another battle in the north to fight them. He was killed by an arrow in the eye, and England was conquered. It was then that the serious castle and cathedral building was started by the Normans, and they introduced the French language, which was used in many written documents. The locals all spoke Anglo-Saxon, of course. The Norman invasion caused a very important change of direction in English history. Many scholars believe, for example, that the beginnings of the British class system started after 1066, when the new King William, William the Conqueror, gave out gifts of land as a thank you to the powerful men in Europe who had helped him invade and conquer England. Really? Mm. And what else did William the Conqueror do? Well, in 1086, after he'd conquered England, he wanted to know how big and wealthy it was so that he could tax the people. So he sent officials all over the country writing down the details of every building and farm. They produced a 900-page handwritten book called the Doomsday Book. It tells us a great deal about life in Norman England in the 11th century. So, what happened next? Well, in 1170, the big news was the murder of Archbishop Thomas a Becket while he was praying inside Canterbury Cathedral. And the king, Henry II, was thought to be responsible for this. He had to say sorry. Also, around this time, the Crusades began, fighting for control of the holy city of Jerusalem. The knights started their regular journeys to Jerusalem, and the oldest pub in the UK was built then, in about 1200 AD. It's actually called the Trip to Jerusalem, and Robin Hood of Nottingham 
the man who stole from the rich to give to the poor, might have drunk there before going off on the Crusades. Another very important date is 1215, when the Magna Carta was signed. The Magna Carta was an agreement between King John and the most important and powerful men, the barons of England, to reduce the king's authority. This led to the beginnings of Parliament at Westminster Palace, and actually was the very beginnings of democracy in England. I see. Yes, and after this, we have some more tough years. In 1337, the Hundred Years' War with France began, and around 1348, the Black Death killed one-third of the population. This was followed in 1381 by the Peasants' Revolt against Feudalism, where the peasants who worked on the land were owned by their landlords and couldn't have any land of their own. They were like slaves, really. <sighs> Not a nice time to live then. No, especially if you were a peasant. <laughs> 1455 saw the War of the Roses between two powerful families of York and Lancaster. It ended with a big battle at Bosworth in 1485. The king, Richard III, was killed on the battlefield. Some say, however, that the war still continues today, when Yorkshire and Lancashire play cricket against each other. <laughs> really? <laughs> Track 14, Part 2, 1500 to 2000. <laughs> then we come to Henry VIII, who became king in 1509. He married six times. He argued with the Pope, who wouldn't give him a divorce from his queen, Catherine of Aragon. So he decided England would leave the Roman Catholic Church, and he made himself head of a new church of England, and then divorced his queen. He married again, and his new queen, Anne Boleyn, had a daughter, Elizabeth. He still wanted to have a son, however, and two of his wives were beheaded so that he could marry again and keep trying for more sons. He did have one, Edward, son of his third queen, Jane, but poor Edward died young. In 1553, Henry's first daughter, Mary, who was a Catholic, became queen. When she died in 1558, Henry's second daughter, Elizabeth, became queen. She became one of England's most famous queens. She was a Protestant. She never married and had no children. England continued to become very powerful while she was queen. She died in 1603. William Shakespeare, our most famous playwright, was writing at this time too, by the way. England had another civil war when Oliver Cromwell and his soldiers, called Roundheads, took power and beheaded King Charles I. His soldiers were called the Cavaliers. His son, Charles II, had to leave England but was brought back as king later on. However, the power balance had changed and the king never had the same power that he had once had. So, in 1721, the first Prime Minister, Walpole, was elected. Okay. Yes, and 50 years later, the American War of Independence began, and America gained its freedom, the first British colony to do so. I see. At this time, too, the first attempts to abolish the terrible slave trade began, and it was finally stopped in 1807. At this time too, we had another battle with the French and Spanish. In 1805, a famous English sea captain, Lord Nelson, was killed during the Battle of Trafalgar with the French. We're getting nearer to modern times now. Yes, we certainly are. We're up to the Victorian era. In 1837, Queen Victoria came to the throne and the British Empire became the largest ever. It was a time of discovery and exploration and by the end of her reign, the British Empire covered over a third of the world's land surface. That's a lot. Oh, yes. After the First World War, 1914 to 1918, in which 20 million people died, there was a need for social change in Britain. 
and in 1926, a general strike took place. Workers protested against unemployment and poverty. The Second World War of 1939 to 1945 changed the world for good. The war lasted six years and was a very difficult time for Britain. After the Second World War, over the next 30 years, most of the old British Empire won independence, starting with India, breaking away in 1947, and the creation of Pakistan. That brings us almost up to date. Yes. In 1952, King George VI died, and his daughter, Queen Elizabeth II, came to the throne at the age of 25. She's been queen for over 50 years and celebrated her golden jubilee in 2002. A new day for Britain to celebrate is when the Olympics come to London in 2012. And that's the history of England in 15 minutes. Well, thank you very much for that excellent overview. Thank you. Track 15. Shall we start? Shall we start? Two. Any questions? Any questions? Three. Whose turn is it? Whose turn is it? Four. It's your turn. It's your turn. Five. Okay, that's all. I finished. Okay, that's all. I finished. Track 16. What do you think we should take? Why don't we take a fridge? What about uh, taking a bicycle? I think we need to take the cooking pans. Yes, I agree with Sonia. Yes, that's a good idea. Okay. What else shall we take? Track 17. One. Free range eggs. Do you buy free range eggs? Well, 
After the Games in China, the next Olympic Games are going to be held in London in the UK. Actually, the history of the Games is very interesting. The Olympics originated in Greece over 2,000 years ago. At this time, naked sportsmen would challenge each other to tests of athletic skill, such as wrestling, um, throwing javelins, and, of course, running. And um, at that time, no women were allowed to watch or enter the Games. It's said that the marathon race started in Greece at the time of the war against Persia, after Alexander the Great's troops won an important victory. One soldier ran from the battlefield at Marathon to Alexander's palace to give him the news. And that was the first marathon and how it got its name. Now, the Olympics, as such, died out after the fall of Greece and the rise of the Roman Empire, which took spectator sports onto a much more violent level, you know, with slaves fighting for their lives. But the modern Olympics, as we know it, was reintroduced in 1896 by a very determined Frenchman, Baron de Coubertin. And it now takes place every four years um, and has only been cancelled two or three times, I think, during the First and Second World Wars. And different countries put on the Winter and the Summer Olympics. And the competition between countries to win the Games is high. The last time Britain put on the Games was in 1948, just after the Second World War. Athletes had to run around football pitches and uh, change in school changing rooms as there was no money to put on a big event. In 2012, the Games are taking place again in London. Nowadays, of course, the cost of putting on the Olympics and its sister event, the Paralympics for disabled athletes, is huge and the number of people involved is enormous. For example, uh, there will be over 40,000 volunteers from all over London looking after more than 15,000 athletes and team supporters, with well over 8 million visitors expected, at a cost of more than £14 billion, just for this three-week event. So, people do ask if it's worth all the money, but I personally think, in the end, that's up to the politicians to decide. And anyhow, it's a fantastic event. Track 20. 1. Government. Government. 2. Parliament. Parliament. Three. European. European. Four. Education. Education. Five. Entertainment. Entertainment. Six. Community. Community. Seven. Environment. 